Namaste to everybody. Welcome. So we've been trying to do this step two of exercise one, observing the self by the self. In step one, we were trying to just become aware of the imagination, particularly paying attention to the feeling in the imagination without trying to change the feeling or you know, trying to stop the imagination without trying to um, sort of evaluate it or justify it or analyze it, just observe it without any kind of reaction. And now in step two, we said that when we are observing this imagination, now we can start evaluating this feeling. Again, the evaluation needs to be done without reacting to it, without analyzing, without justifying. Just evaluate it. What do you need to evaluate? Is it naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me? Do I want its continuity or do I not want its continuity? And essentially, that's what we have been doing for the past couple of days. So if anybody has any observations regarding this or any questions regarding this, any doubts about this, uh, we can discuss them now. A lot of times what happens is that when there are certain instances, certain incidents that we have in our day-to-day -day life, where there is a lot of disturbance inside, those we are able to observe quite easily. And we can see that there is some disturbance and you want to come out of it. It's not a happy feeling. It doesn't feel good to be in that state. You want to come out of that state. At that time also, try to observe what is the feeling at the base of the imagination there is some feeling you feel that feeling so don't try to analyze it don't try to give a name to it don't try to justify it just see it as it is is it something naturally acceptable or not naturally acceptable? And do you want the continuity or you do you not want the continuity? So when you are observing yourself and you observe certain feelings, in the beginning, we are able to observe those imaginations which are causing difficulty for us or those imaginations which are disturbing us when we are in conflict. The subtler imaginations, the subtler things that are going on, we may not observe. So it may seem like the imaginations are going on only some of the time. Or it may seem like since I started paying attention, the imaginations have decreased. But keep it open, keep observing. Slowly you will find there are many instances even when subtler imaginations are going on and slowly you will be able to observe them also. So these, so far what we have covered, the steps one and two, we need to do this every moment. And you will notice that moment to moment, just as the thoughts are changing, the feelings at the base may also be changing. While observing my own feeling, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, going to the second step, I mean, evaluation. That mm -hmm. time, if I have a bad type of bad feeling, means 
with related to some event mm-hmm. it comes mm-hmm. then in that case i uh, i want to change it yes that the spelling is not required yes so i i want to go back to the the original feeling which is very uh, happy mm-hmm. and uh, i want to be happy True. so in this in the evaluation step what to do i mean how to go about <laughs> yes so uh, maybe we'll go further today we'll look at step 3 also see what happens is things are happening very fast inside and it seems like okay now you're saying you know just look and don't do anything about it and it's very uncomfortable how can i stay there so definitely you know in step 3 further we'll be going so you'll find as we go along that we'll be doing steps 1 2 3 4 and very often when you are actually doing it it seems to happen very fast all together so you may club them up together steps 1 2 3 or 1 2 3 4 even sometimes uh but we'll open that up also actually what you are what you are doing is when you are asking me this question is it naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable and you can see it is not naturally acceptable yes exactly. and just ask yourself what is naturally acceptable then and, and there i mean in the next few steps as we go along we'll see this but since you're asking the question we will be doing all that we will be working on it and um yes we want to come out of it so we feel uncomfortable but for now just observe it that you are uncomfortable and then slowly you know that will pass like every imagination that comes and goes it will pass and something else might pop up observe that also hmm? okay fine because right now when we are just starting the observation if we start thinking about changing and doing all that then again we are back down to reacting now we have stopped the observation so remind yourself to go back to observation while observing my imagination i see that the, most of the days i i think about the event that has happened to me in the past that is not a good one Mm-hmm. uh not not a good one in the sense uh, it's like a relationship issue that i uh, it is over now but uh, the mistake i did that keep on coming to me mm-hmm. and that, that thing i can see and um, other thing is i i'm, I'm always uh, you know the, the, the thoughts coming is like uh, in what are all the ways i'm not behaving perfectly and mm-hmm. what are the things i don't have and mm-hmm. whenever yeah the feeling also not a, not a comfortable one mm-hmm. i can able to see well these these things are coming continuously and spontaneously without effort yeah. but like gratitude and uh, other comfortable feeling uh, coming you now like uh, um, rarely yes mm-hmm. i can able to see that nice nice very nice see this is the thing what happens is that we have so many thoughts so many feelings going on and when we don't resolve them like just now devi prasen ji was mentioning what to do you want to change it so when you change it without really you know consciously becoming aware and you know taking a decision to resolve it then even though for that moment you have changed the feeling or you have gone on to something else like we distract ourselves so many times then where does that feeling go it is still there somewhere somewhere in the back yes isn't it yes so you deal with situations as they come and we are busy with the doing we don't focus on the feelings inside but somewhere it is unresolved and it is sitting there <laughs> within us 
Yes. And then something triggers it. We might see the person's face again, or not even that. You might see a picture, or very nothing. True. Very true. Yes. And it comes pops up again, and again you relive that emotion. Again you go through that feeling sometimes. So until and unless we resolve these things, they will keep popping up every now and then. And so much of our life we spend. avoiding situations avoiding people avoiding talking to people avoiding discussing things because somewhere we have this pain this feeling that we are not comfortable with but we didn't resolve it yes it's like uh, it's consuming the energy for, of ourselves throughout the yes. day yes then life seems so difficult it seems such a struggle because now there are so many people that you may not want to talk to you want to avoid so we end up you know selecting a few people that we can interact with the others we kind of keep a distance from but is that natural and is it enough to do that somewhere things keep popping up and even when that person is not there now i am avoiding that person i am not even talking to that person yet those imaginations keep popping up and again i may go through that unhappiness that feeling yes. that is uncomfortable yeah Thank yes 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 ma'am yes so what are the things they did to me like uh, how i am not uh, how i behave without responsibility Mm-hmm. so those things uh, whenever those thoughts coming i feel uncomfortable and uh, had a good feel inside yeah and uh, i i see that uh, these are all start at the initial point is uh, uh, preconditioning that uh, unnecessary desires and uh, unessential desires is the cause of those problems mhm yes nice yes very nice thank you thank you we will look at this assignment and we'll try to see you know what happens when we are in different situations so when you have of course we are observing the imagination and we are trying to see all the various components of the imagination the feeling the thoughts the expectations now when you have an unpleasant interaction with a close relative it could be your spouse it could be a close family member it could be a close friend it could be just about anybody that you have a good interaction with or a friendship or whatever now when you have an unpleasant interaction with that person if you try to analyze that incident objectively try to see what were, what was your expectation at the time what were you thinking what were your thoughts like and what was your feeling at the base of the thoughts so we all have many unpleasant interactions from time to time those interactions may happen from the other side we may not have control it depends on the other person's mood on the other person's understanding on the other person so many things but from my side what can i do that the interaction is not so unpleasant so the process starts by observing myself so if you recall things and do this you will notice that we also have many expectations they may be real they may be unreal and we you know if those expectations of ours are met 
we seem to feel happy. If those expectations are not met, we become unhappy many times without realizing this. And we may have many thoughts about it. We are very good at justifying things for ourselves, no? Where the justification generally comes that I am a good person. I did whatever could possibly be done. What can I do if the other is like this? These are generally the things that we think about and we try to justify for ourselves. But try to see what is the feeling at the base of these thoughts. Are you feeling comfortable? Are you feeling uncomfortable inside? Do you want to stay in that situation, in that not situation, with that feeling? Or do you want to come out of that feeling? Many a times, like we were discussing even yesterday, Maybe our spouse says, you need to do some household task. Maybe you have to help with the cleaning or doing the dishes or some task that you might consider very boring, very monotonous. And it's your day off. Today happens to be Sunday. It is your day off. And you may have many things lined up for yourself to do on the Sunday that you don't have to go to work. Now, when you have to take time out from this free day of yours and do tasks that you didn't intend to do or you hadn't planned to do, and they take time away from the other things you wanted to do. So supposing you have to wash the dishes or you have to help with cleaning the fans or you have to help with the dusting or whatever task there might be at home. Do you feel that you have willingly chosen to do this? Or do you feel like, oh God, one more thing to do and I really don't feel like doing this. Do you feel that you would rather be doing something else that is more important than this? So notice when you feel happy and when you feel unhappy. So if the work you feel is thrust on you that you didn't want to do it but now you are being forced to do it you might do it but what is the feeling at the base are you happy or unhappy so the work is the same you are doing it also it's just that you may be doing it with a lot of unhappiness or you could be doing it with happiness. Does this happen sometimes? Are we able to see this? You can answer in the chat also and you can um, raise your hand and we can take your sharings also. So we can see this, we, it's happening every day in our life. So many times we are doing so many things. And at the end of it, what happens? We did it with unhappiness. Perhaps, you know, it was visible in the way we were doing it because of unknowingly the instructions we were giving to the body. So maybe you wash the dishes, but you wash them with, you know, banging the dishes or showing your disturbance within your unhappiness. 
and at the end of the day or you know after a few days when you recall from your side you feel i did all that and there is no gratification from the other side it may be the spouse may be having a similar this thing that all day i work in outside and inside and there is no gratification nobody cares so so many times we don't discuss things with the others at home because if we are unhappy and irritated and angry and having a feeling of opposition within if we try to go to discuss it becomes an argument so we avoid how many situations we avoid thinking that if we just stay away perhaps that unpleasantness will not be there so you can avoid talking to the other person but very often you know people who are close to us who we are living with you don't have an option of totally avoiding that person also because you are living under the same roof and even like we were saying when we avoid people how can you avoid being with yourself your own thoughts your own feelings keep coming back because they have not been resolved next day there is something slight that the spouse says even something small again this whole thing comes flooding back i did the dishes also i did this also and there is nothing that i can get from here and all this the reaction keeps going on so many thoughts so many so much discomfort the incident is over it happened yesterday while doing the incident also i was unhappy now it is over the spouse just said one line about something and again it got triggered again i start thinking about all of that and how unhappy i was and how many dishes i did and all of that now all through this complaint that is going on inside i may not even be saying it outside but i am unhappy within and we keep living life like this but it's not resolved it's not gone away so slowly over time relationships start becoming very sour even after 15 10 15 20 years of married life many a times some small incident happens and all of those past 20 years every possible you know unhappy incident comes flooding back and it seems like life is a drudgery life is unhappy life is a struggle but there is another way of living life which is not such a struggle which is not such drudgery and that's why we need to observe yes if there are any sharings we will take the sharings argument for the husband and wife the husband directs all the argument towards the parents of the wife and that becomes intolerable to the lady mm-hmm. and um, because those people are very much related to her she has a concern she has a feeling of gratitude uh, towards the parents and then uh, when the parents are brought in the or- argument it really becomes very painful uh, and um, very difficult to come out of that so yeah. how do how one should look at it as yeah. well. so you are seeing things from your perspective i'm sure there will be many men who will say that <laughs> their spouse their wife behaves differently with her parents and behaves differently with his parents that also yeah. happens isn't it right the other right. side is equally true right yes so somewhere we what is happening is if we can see that this is a lack of understanding 
if I understand, I will see that I have a relationship with all. If I don't understand, I may be assuming that my relationship is only with certain people. Because deep down, I am assuming I am the body. So when I am assuming I am the body, then I am linking everything linked to the body as related to me. And whatever is not linked to the body, I don't see my relationship with them. And it plays out in all my activities because I am doing things without conscious, consciously being aware of what I am doing, what I am thinking, what I am feeling. So that assumption plays out. That assumption, that deep assumption, deep-rooted sanskar, is leading to this feeling of opposition for right. the other, isn't it? And this mm -hmm. is true of men and women, both, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, it is about the person lacks understanding. That's it. And if I can see that if somebody is saying something about my parent, does it change the reality of the parent? It doesn't. No. <laughs> it doesn't. So I can still have gratitude for all those people because I know what they have done. But at the same time, this feeling of opposition I am having for the other who is saying all those things, that is also making me uncomfortable, isn't it? Hey. So if I can see that the other lacks this understanding, perhaps the other is not able to see the relationship at this time, then obviously he or she is going to behave in that manner, because they are not able to see that relationship at that time. And this happens to many of us, even for ourselves. Now, see, even with us, we may be behaving differently with the spouse and differently with the children. We may mm -hmm. be behaving a little bit differently with our parents and a little bit differently with his parents at times. And even for our children, when we have, you know, we have so much of love and affection for our children. But when we yeah. are ourselves uncomfortable, sometimes we lash out at the children also. Mm. So it could be both things. It could be that the other person also has some discomfort within, is uncomfortable within, for whatever reason. And the wrong kind of feelings, the feelings that are not naturally acceptable were already there when the person came back from work, for instance. And it starts mm -hmm. affecting whatever conversation we are having now. It could also be that previously we have also made many mistakes and those have not been resolved in the other person. So the other person lashes out mm. or talks ill but whatever the other person is saying it doesn't change the reality of who they are right so all this will come to when we come to the other steps and when we go forward in the exercises we will discuss the, it at length yes yeah did they in short <laughs> that realization is always there that the moment we lack the understanding we find problems with others yes but then it is really not every time unless and until we work harder it is not possible to gain that understanding yeah so it starts with the observation so right. we are used to looking outside this person said like this that person said like this and why did they say it all that we do but we need to step back and take a look inside ourselves also. What kind of feeling am I having? Can I see that right. the other's intention is the same as mine? He just lacks understanding. 
now the whole you know thought process might change and, and notice the moment we are yes and when that thought process changes and i am able to see or i am you know reflecting on this that the other's intention is like mine that person just lacks understanding or perhaps had a hard day at work or something like that now observe are you comfortable or uncomfortable with them and also i matlab the moment you said that if we uh, consider ourselves as body the moment we are even for a fraction of second if we are able to uh, differentiate the self and the body Hmm. then it really um, makes it very light yeah for a lot of time um, i felt i was feeling very heavy hmm. but the moment i realized ki there is a difference body and self so uh, now it becomes like it gives me an opportunity to think within and yes this can become lighter that yes. feeling has come yes and we can certainly discuss with one another you know at some point what yeah. happens is we want to just react at that very moment when somebody says something because we are also not aware of our own thoughts and feelings at that time with that feeling right. of opposition we just react and we might say something harsh there right. itself now it complicates the issue now there is opposition on both sides anyway now and it is building up so right. then it becomes an argument and then eventually both sides may decide to stop talking about it and then we put it back somewhere inside and we continue to you know because we are living with that person we continue to talk on the surface that did you make this did you do this did you eat this like transactions but we never talk about our feelings but it is unresolved it's sitting there next time mm-hmm. something else triggers it again it comes up this is what it is isn't it so ultimately yeah. we have to resolve it at least from our side if we resolve it or at least if from our side if we have the right feeling then we can sit down and discuss with that person that see i felt very bad that you said like this and i feel for them because they have done so much for me but at the same time we must listen to the other also i am sure there are many things the other has to say right so that openness if we have and with that openness if we can discuss then certainly things can be resolved and relationships can be much happier the problem is this feeling of opposition that comes in the middle and so we mm. we don't really discuss we argue and mm. things don't get resolved with that feeling at the base right so if i can have the right feeling and then discuss things might be simpler and also listen for us discuss mm. many times may feel that let me tell you what you did wrong but rather than that if we listen if we say our side that we felt bad about it but at the same time we can keep it open or we can even say that you know there may be many things that i have also done which have hurt you and the other person will then start opening up and saying because whatever they lashed out and said that is also a reaction to something may be linked to the past may be linked to their own discomfort or whatever may be the case isn't it right yeah thank you didi thank you yes couple more hands are raised but i think what we'll do is we'll do a 10 minute observation at this point and then we'll come back to your observations so i'll mute myself for 10 minutes let's try to observe our feelings our imagination our expectations our thoughts our feelings particularly the feelings and even if you are recalling some incidents since the discussion happened you can you know evaluate the feeling there 
and see what is happening. So 10 minutes here, we'll, um, I'll mute myself. Okay, we've been trying to reflect on our imagination for the last 10 minutes. And um, we can take your observations now. I'll just quickly go over the next step because it is linked to this uh, very uh, closely. So try to notice that whatever feeling that you were having and you were evaluating this feeling, try to see the impact it is happening, having. You're already probably doing it, but uh, just to sort of bring it out and make sure we are doing this. Whatever feeling you are having at any moment, try to see with that feeling you are comfortable within or uncomfortable within. Are you in harmony within or there seems to be contradiction inside? Are you in a state of happiness or in a state of unhappiness? So now we are observing the imagination. We are observing the feeling, the thought, the expectation, particularly the feeling. We are evaluating the feeling in the second step, seeing whether it is naturally acceptable or not. And do we want to come out of it or not? Or do we want to stay with that? And the third step is, am I comfortable or uncomfortable within with this feeling? Am I in a state of harmony within or am I in contradiction within? Am I in a state of happiness or in a state of unhappiness? So for instance, when you have the feeling of affection and when you have the feeling of opposition, if we take these two instances, when you have a feeling of affection. Now, this is a feeling that is naturally acceptable to you. You will find that you're comfortable, you're in harmony, you're happy within. The moment you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable to you, like a feeling of opposition, you will notice that you're becoming uncomfortable, you're in contradiction, you're unhappy. Try to observe this 